Welcome to another edition of I Am AAPC. Today, I have with me Beverly Johnson, who, Beverly, I see you all over AAPC social media channels. You're such a great ambassador to AAPC. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Let's just start with a brief summary of where you're at now, where, where you're from, and um, what you do. Okay. Well, basically, um, a little bit about me is I am a lifelong learner. I am a total nerd, <laughs> and I embrace it. I embrace being a nerd. Um, I love reading and learning, and I always have my nose in books. Um, and I tell you what, it, whenever our um, coding books come out each year, I am like a kid at Christmas. You love I it. I absolutely love it. Um, what do you so, love about it? Oh, I just, I love the new books. I love books. And taking that plastic off, opening it up, smelling it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that new book smell, I love it. Oh, that's uh, awesome. But, uh, Where are I you from? A, oh, I'm from Tennessee. I'm from okay. um, actually Milan, Tennessee, and I'm about 20 miles out of Jackson. So, or if you know where Nashville is, I'm about uh, about two and a half hours from Nashville. Okay. So, um, I love it here. I love it in West Tennessee. Okay. And who do you work for? I work for um, uh, West Tennessee Healthcare, and I'm the compliance auditor there. And um, I love what I do there. And I owe it all to AAPC. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, sure I want to hear about this journey. Uh, Beverly, how long have you been, let's start with this, how long have you been um, in, in the industry starting with your medical coding, or maybe it was something even prior to that? Um, I've actually been in the healthcare industry for um, 30 years. Uh, I started right out of high school as a medical transcriptionist, and I did that for about 20 years, and about half of that time I worked at home. And um, I got to the point where I was where I was going to stay. And, uh, you know, and I craved learning. I craved doing new things. And um, and I needed to be around people because I was home all day, every day. And so I took a job as a receptionist at a local clinic. And I was actually introduced into coding there. And I fell in love with it. I ended up transferring to um, another department and um, it was hospital charges. And I got to code all day long, loved it. And the more I got in there and, um, and learned, uh, I just, I had to keep, I had to keep going. I got my CPC uh, in 2015. And um, as I got in there and started doing different specialties and found out I love e &Ms. I love auditing. Wow. So um, 2017, I studied and I got my CPMA. And as I got into that, and the more I did, the more I thought, I love all these laws. I love the regulations. I, I just, I love it. Wow. And so I got my CPCO in 2018. And um, I mean, it's just, it's been a constant thing. Um, AAPC, they offer so much. And, and it doesn't matter where you're at, but you can keep going. Um, right now, of course, in the job I do now, um, I get to audit facility and physician billing. I'm loving learning all about the facility billing and coding and um, that side of things because that's, you know, that's a different world. That's a beast all in itself. Um, and I'm actually thinking about going for my CIC. This oh, wow. Year. So I'm, I'm really excited. There, there's just a lot of good things coming up. Well, when you started talking about your journey, you're talking about being a receptionist mm -hmm. and you had the opportunity to peek into coding a little bit and you said you just knew you loved it. Mm -hmm. Why? What? When that door opened, what appealed to you about medical coding? 
it was like getting to put together a puzzle. It was like a big puzzle every day. You get to pull stuff from here, pull it from here, pull it from here. And it all comes together and makes this story. And it, it's an amazing journey on each chart you do. It's great. And, and you learn. You learn so much. Now, you, when when that door opened and you discovered medical coding, it, it sounds like you you found your first medical coding job before being certified. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. I had a wonderful boss and um, she was actually a coder and she had encouraged me to um, to get into that aspect of it. And um, and I did. And I loved it. And um, uh, it was one of the best moves of my career was well, taking that step. Why, at that point, why did you choose to be certified when you already had a position? It seems like you're happy. Um, what led to that? I did it for me. I did it for me. It's my personal accomplishment. And um, each certification you know, that I, that I go for and I get, I do it for me because it, it makes me feel good and makes me feel like I accomplished something. And, and I love that feeling. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I love that, that you, um, you're looking to um, fill and set up parameters for success for yourself. But I think there may be some viewers who are like, well, do these additional certifications or being certified at all help me progress in my career? Do I earn more money when I um, receive um, these certifications? And did these additional certifications open the door to like your current job and compliance? Tell yes. us about all of that. Yes, it does. Um, once I got my, um, my CPMA and my CPCO, um, I got to thinking, I'm like, okay, I've got these credentials now. I love doing this. I'm fixing to look for something in compliance, in a compliance department. And um, definitely those, having those certifications made a difference. It made a huge difference um, because the um, potential employer, they know that you went the extra mile and you worked your tail off. <laughs> And, um, you know, and, and accomplished this. And, um, I mean, it, it, it really, it helps them know that, um, that you're not, you're not a quitter. You're not going to quit. Yeah. You're going to keep going and, um, persevere. Now did do, or did the skills that you pick up in your CPMA education and, um, compliance education, did, did those, um, uh, skill sets, transfer to the job or is it still on the job training where you're still I'm sure there's some of that but was it were, were, was it helpful to get you there it was helpful to get me there um of course I already had I had these credentials all these you know these years of doing this yeah um before I got this job I'm in now okay I never would have got this job without those certifications okay I mean, oh. I, I can guarantee it. I never would have got it. <laughs> okay. Now, when you're working as a new coder, you're working, you're loving it. And um, at a point you decide to be certified, but how did you learn about certification and AAPC? Well, actually I learned about it through my boss at okay. the clinic. And she was a CPC. And, um, and that's basically how I was introduced into it. And, um, and what I did to prepare, um, of course, at that time, I didn't know anything about any kind of courses that you could take. And so I just, I bought the study guide and um, bought the three practice exams. And that's basically all I did. I, I did that study guide. I did those practice exams over and over and over. And um, read my books. I read my coding books. And uh, anyway, I took my test and passed. Well, and that's what, 
Well, you, you know how difficult the exam can be and how oh, we see in the group, in the APC Facebook group, <laughs> the challenges that people face and not everybody passes it on the first try. Was it stressful for you? What was that exam experience like? Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> the CPC exam was, I would never want to take it again. <laughs> it was very hard. Um I had to, I actually had to travel five hours to take my test. Wow. And um, I, I, I t it took almost the full, at that time it was five hours and 40 minutes. And it took almost right at the five hours and 40 minutes for me to do it. Wow. And um, when I got done and I, my husband, he had come to, pick, he was going to pick me up. I walked out of the, the building and I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even talk. He he started talking to me and I'm like, I can't talk. Yeah. Leave me alone. I know. And then he tried to feed me after and I couldn't hardly even hold my fork. <laughs> it, it was awful. Oh man. But I'll tell you what, that accomplishment though, when you get that pass, oh, there's not a feeling like it in this world. And you mentioned the curriculum and, and things you did to help you prepare. Are there any specific tips that you'd give to a student preparing for the exam? Any secrets? We, we need to know your secrets, Beverly. Secrets? Top secret. Um, get those practice exams. Those practice exams are, to me, they're key. They're key to that exam. Um, I'll tell you this, uh, on all of my exams, I bought, um, I bought all the practice tests, did them over and over and over, passed. The one time I did not get my exams, I failed. Uh -huh. So I went back, bought those exams, studied them, passed it. So I, I, I recommend anybody, uh, no matter what you do, get those practice exams. Yes, yes. And that's that's something we say a lot. And even if when you have the practice exams, be proficient with them. Many people say the practice exams are harder than the real exams. And I talked to our um, our chief uh, product officer, Ray Marie Jimenez, about that. She says that is a myth. And she <laughs> yeah, she thinks that it feels harder because it's your first experience with it. So when you go into the real exam, it's easier. So, well, that's amazing to hear. And um, so you received your CPMA and what, what is the compliance certification called? The CPCO. CPCO. You received those, you received your CPCO before actually working in compliance then? Yes. Yes. Okay. What other types of roles have you had in the business of healthcare? So you're, but we've got the bookends. We've got, you started yeah, as a, a coder. And now you're in compliance, anything in between? Really, no. I mean, it's it's basically been, of course, you know, when, when I was a receptionist, you um, you have many hats in that area. Um, but basically, it's it's been, you know, coding and um, auditing and, um, of course, you know, starting out with medical transcription, which honestly was a really big help because I had all the medical terminology, you know, in my background. Um, that's, I mean, you know, that's basically the sum of it. Okay. Okay. Uh, and now I get to actually get to do some um, provider coder education that I really love doing that um, with onboarding physicians at the organization I work for. Um, I'm a TA with the VILT program. And uh, now let's let's talk about that real quick. So okay. um, to, to kind of kick that off one. And I mentioned this as we started this interview, um, Beverly, you love helping others. I see you all over our social media communities and you're such a great ambassador to the um, the two future medical coders and those and veterans as well. Why? What what? leads you and inspires you to want to be that resource? I love helping people. I love helping people. Um, and if 
Well, we'll, we'll talk about being okay, like the like the TA, you yes. know, working with the students. And, okay, that's teacher's assistant with our training yes, programs. Yes, yes. Um, you know, we get to do a lot of uh, like one on one sessions with them, like little, you know, tutoring sessions. And during those sessions, you can actually see when light bulbs go off. And, you know, it, it makes you feel so good because you're helping them and you're making them feel good. They feel good about themselves and they, they feel accomplished. And um, one of the most rewarding things is they get through this course. You know, they struggle. It's a hard course. It really is. And it's a fast paced course. Um, so they work really hard and they struggle and, you know, and you have to give them a lot of encouragement, just like, like we need encouragement. Um, given that encouragement, uh, I, I just, I love helping them. And, uh, whenever they send me a message, like an email after they take their certification exam, they say they passed, you know, that that's just I'm so proud of them because, you know, we're all adult learners and it's, it's hard being an adult learner because you have careers, you have family, you have all these obligations, but you're sticking to it. You're taking these courses, you're studying, you're passing, you're getting your certification. That's huge. Yes. That's huge. And and I'm proud of them. I'm just so proud of them. I love helping them. All right. And now, in addition to your day job, um, you are a teacher's assistant with our VILT program, which is virtual instructor led training. Is that right? Yes, sir. And uh, how did you find that position? How did that happen for you to work that, with ATC? That was amazing. I actually, um, and I want to say what the importance is of networking. Networking is, we all need to do it. <laughs> But I went to, um, well, it was the HealthCon, DC HealthCon, the virtual, and um, Craig Larson, he had reached out to me. Craig works for APC. Yes, yes, he is wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> and he actually got me on the, the right track to do that. And so um, during that conference, I, uh, I got my... Uh, I sent in an application to become a TA, got that done. And I actually, um, I thought I want to be an instructor. And so I signed up for the instructor course and um, did that this past summer, passed it. So now I'm an, I'm an approved instructor. Well, CPCI, is that right? No, no, I've got the oh. CPMAI. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so um, anyway, so I'm really excited about that. And. Uh, for the future, I would love to one day be able to be a built instructor because I see the difference they make and um, how they encourage their students, how they encourage their TAs. I mean, it's, I've been blessed to work with um, Miss Jackie, Jackie Kupros. Oh, yes. Yes. The former yes. NAB president. Oh, she's wonderful. And as a matter of fact, I met her at my very first um, conference. I went to regionals in um, South Carolina. It was Charleston, South Carolina. Yes. And um, they had this fast paced. It was like a speed auditing class. And I got to meet her and she was so amazing. And she just really impressed me. And um, I, it was just it was great. And I got to meet Mr. Bevan. At that yes. one, our president oh, and CEO, was, Bevan yes, Erickson. Yes. yes, he was so amazing. Oh, he he was wonderful. We were all sitting at a table, and um, he just comes in, sat down with us. It was a group of us ladies, and just basically talking like us, you know. And he's so down to earth, and and he really he wants to know what the members want. And, you know, he was asking us questions about what we thought of the conference, and it was wonderful. And he wanted um, to know kind of what we thought toward future.
conferences, any ideas? And so it was, that's two things that really stood out to me. Um, you know, and like I said, that was my first conference, my first time to ever travel by myself. Mm-hmm. And um, it was, it was amazing. I made so many friends. And Oh, that's wonderful. Um, it's that's great. great. To hear. And I definitely want to tell anybody, if you have a chance to go to conference, uh, go, go, because it can be life altering. Yes, we have, just for our viewers who may not be familiar with APC conferences, we have a national conference in the spring of each year. Um, this year in 2023, it will, it will be in May in Nashville, Tennessee. So right in your neck of the woods, Beverly. And then we will be having our regional. We sometimes have um, two regionals um, the past few years, one due to the pandemic, but we will um, be in Washington, D.C. in August. So looking forward to both of those. And, uh, you know, Beverly, you just talk about networking and um, really the AAPC community. Yes. That's what makes AAPC great is our members and that ability to connect even students. Um, we talk, I've met many students who have found their first employer from networking in the mm-hmm. Facebook group or at their local chapter meetings. All of those are valuable resources for our members. Yes. Now, um, Beverly, have, having spoken with many students and seeing their challenges and and um, roadblocks. What advice, or actually, let's do this. What's the what's the most common challenge that you may see with students? Is there something that that comes up frequently? They feel overwhelmed, okay. um, especially at the start. Um, they because it's a lot to learn, and I always tell them, I you know, take one day at a time. You know, and, and it gets easier. And and they see that. They see that as they progress, you know, each week. Um, you can see the confidence start growing. But that's one of the main things is uh, they're just they're, the feeling of being overwhelmed. It's a lot of new information. Yes, yes. Different. You're learning a new language, really. Yes, you are. You are. And uh, but that's one of the main things. Uh, and one good thing about being a TA is you get to encourage them and, you know, let them know, hey, it's going to be OK. We, you know, we all go through it. We've all been there. And, um, you know, it helps encouraging them and um, letting them know that that's normal. That's a normal feeling. Yes. Yes. Awesome. That's great to hear. Thank you for sharing that. Now, let's talk about Beverly outside of work. I know that's tough because you're so passionate about what you do, and I'm sure you think about it a lot. But I see well, you cannot help but not notice the Grogu behind you. Are you a sci-fi and um, a sci-fi love, kind of fan? I love all of that. I love all of it. Um, I love my little baby Yoda. He keeps me company while I'm in the office. <laughs> Um, but no, I love, uh, movies. I love all kinds of movies. I love true crime, horror, uh, you know, I love it all. Okay. Um, but, uh, I guess, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what my favorite would be. I, I just, I really like it all. Now you, you mentioned movies. Are you a big movie theater fan or do you like because it seems to be drifting away from that or do you like to just download and watch from the comfort of your own home or get that big box of popcorn at the theater and hang out there (laughs) I love going to the theater and getting my popcorn and my drink and having the you know the atmosphere I love the atmosphere yes Um, I just you can't beat that especially if you're watching a scary movie (laughs) You can't beat it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, Beverly, um, do you have any final words or thoughts for um, for a, a potential coder, someone who's looking to come into this industry? Um, what kind of encouragement would you give to them? Go for it. Okay. Go for it. Um, once you get in there and you get that core, that core credential, you get that CPC, the sky is the limit. You can branch out into so many different areas, um, 
but you don't, no, I tell them, go for it. Go for it. Get that CPC. And um, who knows what road it's going to take you down. Yes. Yes. Many yeah. roads, many roads to choose from. Well, and you're a great example of that. We see that with so many members who start out with their CPC. And that was the pinnacle at that time without realizing there's compliance like yourself. There's auditing. There's education where many coders become educators and educate physicians and hospital or facility staff. So, so many, and there are many more possibilities beyond that even. There are. So you just, you kind of take that first step with your CPC and then you ex start, ex you can start exploring from there and there's nothing wrong with, and there are many coders who prefer to be coders and mm -hmm. they love it. They love what they do. They're in that world and they, they are good. Oh, that's right. That's right. And, you know, had I not taken that step toward, um, toward the auditing realm, and the compliance realm, you know, I, I might have stayed right there, but you have so many different options. There's so much out there. And once you get out there and you get to, you know, try coding in these different areas, you're going to find that you're going to love some, you're going to love one of them more than the other. Yeah. You know, nine times out of 10, you're going to find one that you like more. Yeah. And you can get that credential. <laughs> I love it. Yep. <laughs> Well, uh, before we wrap up then, Beverly, what, what's next for you? Do you have a, another credential on your mind or maybe a, a path that you would like? Um, probably this year, I'm going to go for the CIC, okay. the inpatient coding. Okay. Um, but I do have some good news. What's that? I got, um, I'm going to be able to serve on the AAPC Chapter Association Board of Directors. Oh, wonderful. Congratulations. Yes, I'm so excited about that. And um, I've got Region 4. Okay. And I am looking forward to um, to working with all the chapters and, and helping and just, I'm so excited. Well, <laughs> hey, Beverly, that means that you and I will get to work together more. So that's going to be fun. That's great. <laughs> and just for our viewers who don't know what that is, APC has a network of local chapters uh, mm -hmm. over, oh, I, I think between four and 500, and they are all over the country. They are, there are actually chapters around the world as well. And uh, they operate under the AAPC Chapter Association. So the AAPCCA, and we have a board of directors and Beverly was just appointed a role to that. So tell us about that. How, how did you get that role? Did you nominate, you just threw your name in the hat and um, what through the well, interview process? I had, of course, I was an officer, you know, last year. A local and, chapter officer. Yes, yes, a local chapter officer. And they had sent out emails, uh, you know, encouraging people that, you know, if, if you feel like this is, you know, something that you're interested in or something you would like, you know, apply. And I was like, that would be wonderful. It would be so rewarding to be able to, be there and give back, give back to an organization that has given me basically everything. Um, I mean, but I, I was real excited and um, I actually talked to Miss Jackie and she was encouraging and um, Miss Jackie's wonderful. <laughs> she is, she's great. Um, but you know, the rest is history. Yeah. So, All right. Well, we look forward to, yeah. Bye. We'll see you at conferences on a regular yeah. basis for the next few years. And we will see you on AAPC Social Hour and, and um, many other places, I'm sure. I'm excited. All yes. right. Well, thank you for your willingness to serve. Beverly, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. For those who are watching, uh, you may be watching on our YouTube channel. You can also listen to Beverly share her story on the AAPC podcast. You can find that in your favorite podcast app by searching for the AAPC podcast. And Beverly, I appreciate you so much. You have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.